any fraction, third shall whole thing or number that has been chopped up into three equal parts. Now equal is an important word here because if it's just any other thing chopped into three they might be uneven. But when we're talking about thirds, they're always exactly chopped into three. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, <clears throat> like the pie shown below, it is one whole pie but it's been cut into three delicious slices. So colour two. Just hang on a second. You can choose to have one piece of pie. The fraction would look like this. One on the, the number on top says you have one piece, right? It goes the And bottom number tells you that it's been chopped up into three parts. That's easy to see. You can see that there, right? But what if you're really hungry? Perhaps you could have eat two pieces of pie. Well, then the fraction looks a little bit different. This time you have two parts of the pie, top number is the numerator, right? And the pie, but the pie is still chopped into three parts. So the bottom number doesn't change, we're just having two of those parts instead of one. So, that first question there, it says, what does two thirds look like? You've coloured in one third, what would two thirds be? Two thirds. Yep. Wonderful, really, really good. Okay, and you've got a little box there, and it's already been chopped into three. So, what would one third of that box look like? So, thirds of a whole thing are pretty easy to understand, right? That's what you've done there. Mm. Okay. Yes, they are. But what about finding about what thirds of sets are, or numbers bigger than one? For example, if I had six biscuits for morning tea, my friend and I, three of us all together, want to share them out equally. Now that's, a, that's again a key word, it has to be the same. So like, we don't have it say one person has one biscuit, one person has three and the other one only has like two or something like that. We share them out so they'll get the same amount each. Does that make sense? We can chop our set of six into three smaller groups using thirds. Start again. So, one third of six is two. So you can see that this group has been split into three groups, like we mm -hmm. talked about on the board, right? Yeah. So by equal sharing, I can quickly see that six biscuits put into three groups, one, two, three, gives me two in each group. And two. My friends and I would get two bickies each. Yum. What's your favourite biscuit? on it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Chocolate chip. Chocolate chip. Delicious. Ooh, I do like chocolate chip. Okay, so let's have a look at this next one. So we're going to do our own one here. So righty, right, right oh mighty mass midgets. Are you a midget? No. Let's have a go. So we're going to find out what one third of nine is, right? So uh, have you got your pencil there? Okay, so you can see that you could either go this way or that way and I could figure out what one third of nine is. So see if you can make this set into three groups. Three equal groups, what would you do? Yeah. So have a go. You, so put, do a circle just like those uh, number six there. You got it, Tyron, that's perfect what you've done there. Just make sure you've got three groups, not groups of three. Nice. So if we were talking about one of those groups, how many is in one of those groups? So one third of nine is... Ta-da! Really good. Okay, let's try this next one. You can see that you've got all these boxes here, these squares. So see if you can make those into three groups. Good. So you can see you've got three groups and you've counted the family in each of those groups. And there's four. Perfect. Nice. You know how before it said midgets? Well, midgets is a type of um, squat car. Yes. Okay, so now you've had your go. You've got one third of 12, and you've figured out that there's four in each of those boxes, so the answer is 
four. Well done, you. Cha -ching, Do you reckon you could have a go at this next one by yourself? Mm. Okay. Have a go. I'm going to go sideways. Yes, that makes sense because you don't always have to go the same way. Okay, so now we're looking at the same sort of things as these. And you've got all of these right, right? So you've said one third of nine is like this, and the answer is three, right? One third of twelve, the answer is four. But here, have a look. I think because you've done it the same way, but if you turn it around, and if I make my group, if I, if I do three groups this way, how many are in each of those groups there? Five. So just uh, just cross that out and put a five instead on the blue band one. Because what we're saying is, if I split this thing into three groups, how many is in each one of those groups, right? Five. Five, yeah. You got this one right. So you can see there if we made that into a group like that, uh, the seven in each of those three groups, so one third of 21 is seven. Right. Easy. Now, down here we're doing it without numbers, but if you're stuck, what you can do is draw out those with dots or crosses or whatever, and uh, equally share them that way. Does that make sense? So if you were really stuck and you say, oh, I don't know what a third of 18 is, I could go 18 divided by 3 or whatever it is, but maybe I'm not up to that yet, and that's fine. What I could do, uh, I'll show you on a different piece of paper, and then I'll just do it. Equal sharing works like this. We know that we're talking about thirds, right? So we're going to have um, three groups. That's it. That's the thing we know. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Okay. So whatever number we have, we can start by saying, well, if we have three groups, we can equally share into those three groups. So the simplest way to do that is if we had three, we could say, well, there's one in each group. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to do 18, what we do is we just keep equally sharing them out until we get to 18. So we've got six so far. Seven, eight, nine. True so far? Mm -hmm. 10, in fact, you can do this. 11, doesn't matter what color really. 12, and we've got to, we need a bit more, don't we? Because we're gonna go up to 18, so keep going. 14. Yep. 17, 18. Perfect. Now, from there, we can see how many are in each set. We can just really easily count those. So, how, just count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, we know that the one third of 18 that's in our question there, the answer must be six. Six. Perfect. Now, the next number is quite a lot bigger, right? It's 27. But we can still do it like this, we can keep going. Now, we don't need to redo the whole thing. We know we've got 18 here already, don't we? So how about we keep going until 27? Let's see what we come up with. Yep. Lovely, that looks really awesome. Now you've really used a lot of counters there, but we don't have to count all of them. You've already counted all of them. You know there's 27 there, right? Yeah. So, we only, uh, we only want to know what one third of that number is. So, how many is in one set? Nine. Nine. So, one third of 27 is? Nine. Yes, and you can write that in. Now, when you get more used to it, you might find that counting out like this takes too long, right? And so it's easier just to remember some of your basic facts. Or you may have seen them somewhere else before, or they might even be written on one of these things here, so that you, you don't always have to do this counting out thing. But, in the meantime, while you're getting used to it, this is a perfectly good way to do it. Yeah. Make sense? Yay!